Welcome to the Town and Country Podcast, Two Churches, One Ministry. I am your host, Jonathan Illion, and we are glad that you chose to join us here today in Cedar Falls, Iowa. With us, as always, are two of the finest examples of awesomeness that I could find, at least here in the building at the last minute, Pastor Kevin Richter. <laughs> 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 That's, That's quite I just, the intro. I love doing <laughs> I'm sorry going to try to live down to that reputation. Oh, <laughs> yes. I love doing that. Pastor Kevin Richter is the pastor at St. John Lutheran in Rhinebeck, Iowa. It's good to have you with us again, sir. It's good to be here. All right. And Pastor Joe Kapanka, who is the pastor at Emmanuel Lutheran in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's uh, good to be here. All right. Very good. So thank you both for being here today. Um, so we are going to continue continue talking about living Lutheran, and our main focus for this topic is to bring the small catechism to a level of practical everyday living. And so we're focusing on the third commandment today, which is remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. So, Pastor Kevin, let's hear what you have to say about this commandment and what it means for us. Yeah, well, I, you know, I was thinking this morning, it's first commandment, second commandment, those are pretty pointed, you know, it's kind of knew what direction we're going in. And it's mm -hmm. like this one with the Sabbath, you know, like we could go 87 different directions. And I know the two or three I might want to cover, but trying to think of the two or three that you're going to bring up and want to cover, and then what two or three are actually the ones that people need to hear for the practical <laughs> yeah. living. And it's like, man, what? where is my mind going in all this? But we just trust the Spirit will lead us through this. And oh, we may need to spend several weeks on it. <laughs> that's right, yeah. You know, and, and I do think this is a topic that has just been kind of dropped and forgotten. You know, yeah. I, I think it's been reduced down to something too simple. Um, yep. I think we associate Sabbath with just church. You yeah. know, just coming to worship and that's it. If I put in my hour on Sunday morning, I've kept the Sabbath, you know. And and when you really look at the history of the Sabbath all the way back to Genesis, it is so much more than that, you know. And one of the things I've, in, in studying the Sabbath quite a bit, actually, in the last couple of years, is it's just a rhythm of life. You know, it is a holistic view of we work and we rest, we work and we rest, and we need that intentional time of rest and and rest, physical rest for our bodies, you know, spiritual rest for our souls, and an intentional piece of that rest is reconnecting to God and making sure we're always connected to God and receiving what we need for that refreshment from Him, you know, and so, um, yeah, I don't know, what. where would you go with this right off the bat? You know, I, and, I, and I totally agree with you. I think of all the commandments, at least in that, that first table, this is the one that gets the least amount of of attention and probably deserves the most amount in our day and age. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was uh, reading through the, the large catechism and, and it struck me um, one of the, the statements that, that Luther makes in the large catechism is that um, the third commandment in a literal sense does not apply to Christians. <laughs> and you think, what? The third commandment does not apply to Christians in a literal sense. Now that's an important phrase to include in that because if you think it's just about the day, you, know, you got to show up on Sunday morning, you do your, your Sunday you know, penance, you do your Sunday requirements, um, and then you've kind of covered that, you've checked that box off, and, and you can go about the rest of your week as if you know, uh, God didn't exist. Um, and I think the, the point he was trying to make was that your, your, your statement, Kevin, was exactly right. It's, it's that pattern of life. It's just about who you are, because it's not about a day. It's about uh, recognizing that God is a part of your life and setting aside time in your life to see God's grace, to receive God's grace, to be in, in communion with God in an intentional way. Um, and we don't do that very well. Um, and so I, I think that that's an area that I think there's room for all of us to grow in. Yeah, I uh, think the other <laughs> key word in just the commandment itself in our English translation is the keeping. You know, yeah. so often when we hear keeping, our ears automatically think of obey. You know, yeah. keep keep these things means to do them, obey them. When really, if, if I said, if I handed you my wallet and I said, will you keep this for me? It doesn't mean it's your job to... Well, there's not much in there. Well, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't <laughs> go very really far. But, to keep, is there? <laughs> you know, but it's not your job to obey something with my wallet, to do something. It's just your job to hold on to it and not let go of it. Right. You know, and so... When God says keep the Sabbath, he just means 
hold on to it. Keep exactly. it a part of your everyday life. It doesn't mean you have to do things. You know, this is the Pharisaical thing, right? They turn the day of rest into so many works and laws of what I must do or not do that it actually becomes a burden and more, you know, not refreshing at all, but actually more burdensome because I have to do and obey these things instead of just keep it, keep it a part of your life. And, and that's really the essence of it is, is when we make it a law, I mean, while it is in the, the law and the Ten Commandments, the, the law is for our own feeding and nurturing. Right. The law is for our own good. And if you turn it into something that that diminishes something that, that uh, as the law always does, that, that tears down and, and destroys, rather than something that feeds and, and nourishes and, and, and strengthens your relationship, um, no wonder you, we get uh, um, resistant to it. We, we try to minimize it. Right. Um, rather than than celebrate that opportunity that that comes with it. Yeah, and so I think you know, a perfect example of this is: Do I, you know, do I want to wake up early on Sunday morning and put on nice clothes and go sit somewhere for an hour, or would I rather just sit at home? You know, and it's like, well, of course, our sinful nature says sleep in, stay at home. You know, but I'm thinking about everything I have to do to go be at church and do the right thing. You know. And this is where I think Jesus' words of Sabbath, you know, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for the man. Right. It's not so about true. us and what we're doing to obey the Sabbath. It's the fact that the Sabbath was made for us to restore us, to reflect, refresh us, replenish us. And if I see that as that opportunity of I get to come be fed, I get to come be rested, I get to come be replenished with the strength I need in this Sabbath Ta- uh, Sabbath opportunity of worship, public worship, and of course Sabbath goes beyond public worship, that's one of the yeah. key points too, but in public worship, you know, then it's not a, I have to go do this, oh, this is a chore, this is a burden, this is a, I need this for this week and God is giving it to me, you know, and so Sabbath is made for us, not the other way around. And Yeah, and that, and, and that attitude changes the way we think when we come into the worship setting. You know, <laughs> I had an interesting experience this past Sunday um, before the worship service started. You know, I was greeting uh, families coming in, and there was a y- young man, and it was uh, pre teen age, and-, and he looked at the service and-, and he looked up at the altar and saw that it was a communion Sunday. He says, I don't want to stay for the long church service because <laughs> <laughs> you know, communion is a little bit longer because of the nature of communion. But you know, it just made you think about he sees worship as the short service that he can endure, the long service he just can't put up with. Yeah. You know, and, and for this first uh, 10 or 15 minutes of the service, you, you could just see in his face, he was just like just grinding it out. It's like, I just can't stand being here because it's the long service. Right. And I think that he represents probably in an honesty that maybe some of us really have when we come and say, oh gosh, we got five hymns, we're going to sing all the verses, or you know, the readings are you know 23 verses on an Old Testament lesson. Well, or, let's not forget the most obvious one. Pastor's sermon is just way too well, long. I've never heard that. Does yeah, it, you get right. that often? Because uh, that doesn't happen to me. <laughs> You're more long-winded than I am, so... <laughs> no, I, I wish it was longer. I really do, yeah. <laughs> but no, I think that's that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. Is that it's not just the fact that we're coming and checking a box and saying, I did my my hour, hour and a half, or two hours on Sunday morning because I fulfilled an obligation. But if I'm being fed, if I'm being lifted up, if I'm hearing that beautiful good news of the Lord, um, the time is not the issue. Right. I, I just can't wait to get more of it. And, and that's where we need to, to, I think, open up the idea that the Sabbath is about for us, not us to fulfill an obligation. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, you know, I preached that message one time, you know, man's not for the Sabbath, Sabbath is for the man, and it's not about us giving this hour to God as our sacrifice, yeah. our tithe, it's about God giving us what we need. And actually had another Lutheran pastor challenge me that I've always taught it that this is the people giving their time to God, you know, this is what we do for him as our worship, and it's like, well, then you're teaching it wrong, in my opinion, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and uh, but, you know, it's like, okay, so we tell our, our kids, you know, let's go to grandma's house, and if you see it as I have to go sit and talk to grandma to make her happy and do this, and I have to just give up an hour of my life to do this, you're not going to enjoy it. But if you say, I get to go to grandma's house, she's going to feed me and love me, and I get to spend time with her, like, that's a joy. That's something I want to go do, right? You know, and so it's the same thing of, if this is something I'm doing for God, yeah, I don't really want to go do that. But if it's something God is doing for me, and I just get to sit and receive and enjoy and participate, yeah, then I want to spend that time with him. And it changes 
the, our perspective is when we're in worship is how we perceive what's going on during the service too, doesn't Correct. it? Correct. It rather than simply having to to fulfill this obligation of of time slot, we are engaged in the service. We're engaged in the liturgy. We're we're active in the hymns. We're we're listening, hearing, reading, inwardly digesting that word. Right. And and it's we're receiving this in a whole different attitude, aren't we? And and it's not yeah, not just waiting for it to be done and over. And it's not. Okay, I gotta sing loud enough. I gotta be, you know, in the right intent and heart when I praise because this is me giving my praise to God. No, it's I come with listening ears because what is God feeding me with today? How is He, you know, restoring my hope and joy and comfort and, you know, all those things? And then I think, you know, when you practice that in worship and this opportunity of I get to be with God, it's Him feeding me, then that carries over into daily devotion, exactly. daily prayer life, you know, because now it's not, I got to get up early to read my Bible before work. It's, I get to get up and spend time with God and enjoy this time because it's going to make my whole day better, you know, just yeah. being with God. And that that change in in perspective, that change in, in attitude is is really what gives our our Sabbath rest, if you will, more than just that Sunday morning experience. It right. gives it that cycle of life, as you called it, that rhythm of life, um, value and meaning. And, and it's the, the air that we breathe. It's the, it's the life existence that we, we, we operate under. You know, I can't wait to get up in the morning. You know, and my routine is, is, you know, I wake up in the morning and one of the first things I do is I'm kind of going through my, you know, shower, shave and, and getting ready stuff is thinking about what, what am I reading? Where am I in my scripture readings? And, and I can't wait to get in and, and do my devotions because it's it's exciting. There's there's stuff there to um, because I know that God is feeding me for the day because I need it. Mm-hmm. Um, of all the sinners in this world, I, I need more <laughs> grace than most. And as a young pastor who hasn't developed that habit yet, you know, I wake up and I'm already thinking either a I'm late because I slept in or b you know, what do I, what's the first thing I got to do when I get in the office? What's, what am I forgetting? You know, and I get in and I start making my checklist, I start working, you know, and you just work, 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 and you just feel stressed and burnt. And it's like, and I'm trying to do this. Out. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do this all on my own instead of beginning with God, doing it with God, letting him do it through me, you know, and those kind of things. And I mean, how many people just get up, hit the floor running, go, 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 hit the pillow. They're so exhausted and never had 10 seconds for God all day long, you know, and 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 that's the society we live in, and we think our, we're being more productive. And um, I don't. Uh, somebody can can help me find this quote, but I remember someone telling me somewhere that that uh, Luther used to say that if he doesn't start each day with three hours of prayer, he can't get anything done. And, and I don't know if that's a, an apocryphal quote or if it's legitimate. Yeah, the the twist on the quote I've heard is you know like if I start one day every day with an hour of prayer. And I've got twice as much stuff to do today. Well, then I need two hours of prayer today. You know that, like, yeah. actually, when I'm busier, I need to spend more time with God. Because how many of us, when I'm busier, the first thing we cut is that devotion. Oh time, yeah, because it know? seems like it's 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 wasted time right. and space. But it actually, that's you know, it's like how many of us would say you got a really full day. You got to work. You're going out in the field. You're going to the job. You got a hard job to do. Um, I better skip breakfast because you know I got too much <laughs> stuff to do. Right. You know, you're, you're missing out on the very thing that you need to get you through the day. And I think the other thing with our society has just taught us is we're not comfortable sitting in silence, you know, sitting still. You know, we need to be productive moving all the time, you know, and I'm one of the worst. I got to be agitated, moving, fidgeting, you know. <laughs> and so to just come in and sit in silence and read the word, it does feel like a waste of time because it's uncomfortable. It's I don't like this, you know. And, and uh, so it's just training yourself this time with God is okay, you know, to just sit with someone and not talk is still valuable time with that person, you know, or to sit and have a conversation that's not accomplishing something, it's just a conversation, you know, and those kind of things too. And I think that too, people can make their devotional life something of, okay, what is this telling me for my life today? You know, <laughs> we can what, turn it into a task. Right, a you know, like, how am I supposed to live this out today? Instead of just, this is just God's Word speaking to me, feeding me, filling me, now I'm going to go live with that Word all day, think about it, you know, and so... Yeah, I, you know, I think, again, we could go so many different ways with Sabbath, and I think part of it is we're just not good at it. You know, we're yeah. just not Sabbath people. And when you look at the Old Testament, I mean, it wasn't just one day a week. It was, you know, the, every seventh day was a Sabbath. Every seventh year was a rest year. You know, every 50th year, which is seven times seven plus one, was the Jubilee year, yeah. you know. And, and there was a rhythm and a pattern built into all of life that we work and then we rest. We work and then we rest. We spend time with God in these times. So in your own life, it, you know, maybe you don't have every Sunday available to go to church and you can't do public worship. 
but what is your Sabbath pattern? You know, where are those intentional moments of rest that are with God? You know, not just I'm going to get an extra hour of sleep, but where is it that I'm going to spend some time in rest with God? And maybe it's early morning, maybe it's late evening, maybe it's your noon hour. Where's that time where you can build that pattern that God is a priority, spending time with him is a must in your life because you need that strength and refreshment to keep going about your busy day. Absolutely. And, and, you know, again, time constricts us, but there are literal plethora of resources that you can take with you. You know, the portals of prayer, your, your pocket Bible, your, your electronic devices, and, and simply sitting in your, your truck, uh, you know, and lunch hour, uh, you know, just taking two minutes to, to read scripture or five minutes, there's, you know, finding that time to kind of just shut the world out and say, this is just you and I, Lord, uh, you know, there's lots of ways that you can go about doing that. If you're so bored, you could even <laughs> listen to two pastors ramble on for 20 minutes in a podcast. You know, it's... That, that you got to really be desperate. To I, that, don't I, <laughs> I don't think people are willing to do that. No. no not at all. And no. I, I think no. the last point, too, that, you know, Luther really brings out, you know, because he talks about the Sabbath day, and he doesn't focus on necessarily worship. He doesn't right. focus on rest. The one thing he goes to above all else is the word, you know, and so, you know, this intentional time in scripture, in God's word, that is a key part of the Sabbath. You know, you can go out and rest outside looking at nature. That's a great rest. But, you know, sitting out there and reading in scripture or thinking about a psalm or something like that, that takes it to that next level of Sabbath intentionally being with God, hearing his word. Absolutely. I'd like to, you know, right on the air, just maybe uh, adjust one moment because there's a whole area of this third commandment that, that I think needs to be addressed that we just haven't been able to do is I maybe next month, let's continue with the third commandment and talk about how do we do this in the family? How yeah. do we do it with family devotions with raising our children up to do that household altar? Because I think we can do a whole session on that third commandment and that we've been talking kind of about the personal individual level, but in that corporate family level, and it, it, yeah, we could talk marriage, you know, marriage, starts yeah, as husband and wife and, leading into the kids and yep. bringing them into Would, it. Is that something that I think we could extend this for one more month? And because there's just too much here to kind of pass this over right. with, with, and miss that. Okay. Third commandment, part one, done. Third commandment, part two, <laughs> coming at you next month. That is Does that work perfect. for you, John? Oh, no, I think our, we could fit that director? in. I think that's totally doable. So thank you very much for bringing clarity to what the third commandment actually means to us as, as Christians living in the world today. And we look forward to part two with uh, you both here. And I appreciate you guys uh, coming out and giving us your thoughts. So thank you for choosing to join us today. Today for the Town and Country Podcast, Two Churches, One Ministry. We want to remind you again to submit your questions on the topic of Ask the Pastors, which will be the topic of our next podcast, to podcast at emmanuelcf.com so that we can answer those burning questions that you have about life as a Christian in the world today. So special thanks goes out to our audio engineer for this podcast, Mr. Dave Kaler. Once again, thank you for being ready to offer your expertise when we need it the most. So on behalf of Pastor Kevin and Pastor Kapanka, I am your host, Jonathan Illion, and we invite you to come back next week as we bring you the ne- next time, not next week, as we bring you the next installment of the Town & Country Podcast. Thanks once again and have a great week.